What's up and welcome to another episode of the Grindline Podcast. You're listening to episode 229. I am here tonight with Ryan and Tyler. We've got some NHL rumors floating around. We've got some signings that could affect the Red Wings down the road. We've got a roster that's going to get a bit of a shakeup, but I want to get how you guys are doing tonight before we move into the show. How are you guys? I'm good and ready to go. Got a beer in hand and it's not, it's been beautiful out. Not too warm. A little chilly. I actually had to put a coat on this morning, so that was kind of odd. But uh, other than that, pretty good. Tyler? Horrible. Allergies are kicking my ass. <laughs> Horrible. Yeah. <laughs> um, I sound like this, so uh, if I don't talk a lot, that's why. You don't sound too far off normal. Stuffed up and everything else. Uh, it's It's been ever since that Canadian air came up here. It's like it feels like it's irritated my allergies way worse because I was fine. I, I feel like my allergies were totally fine. And now now I got this again. So we'll see where it goes. I don't know if I'm sick. I don't think it's like a campfire smoke almost. No pun intended. It's been bad. I walked outside last week one day and it was hazy. Like you could tell there was smoke and all it smelled like was campfire. And I'm like, this is absolutely awful. I couldn't. There was like three days last week where I struggled to breathe and it was bad. Yeah. Campfire smoke. That'll that'll wreak havoc. Not campfire smoke, but like tree wood smoke. That'll wreak havoc on the uh, the old allergies. That's the worst. So that's probably what it is. Then it's a mixture of the two. It's that oh, and the dumping it. all the pollen. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but besides allergies and stuff, I think uh, we're all OK. And like I said, we have a bit of a show today and it's not a whole time. Like Red Wings aren't doing anything. It's more of like the meme of someone poking Iserman with a stick and saying, come on, do something because n- nothing's really happening besides the finals right now where Vegas is like right on the edge right on the edge of their first Stanley Cup. And uh, Florida's really pissed off. But I want to get into the rumors. Tyler's really pissed off. <laughs> Whatever, Tyler. Suck it up. Like, come on. Fuck that team. Who cares? Oh, You're just mad. They put together a team that can win, and they're, and they're winning. Good for that. I don't feel bad for any of these other teams that have been around for 20-plus years that nope. haven't won a cup yet. Because nope. you haven't been able to get out of your own fucking way to go win a cup. Get a GM that's worth a damn. Yeah, I just don't like all the turnover. I, I think it's it puts a bad taste in people's mouth and, and stuff like we did talk about this already, so I'm not going to get into they, it. But. but you know what? If you're a player that didn't get moved out, you know what that tells me? You're a damn good player. They want to fucking win. Yep. So if you're getting brought in there, they, that, to me, that says, all right, maybe I wasn't good enough, but that could be motivation for you to not to go do better somewhere else. And on the flip side of that, the player that's getting brought in be like, oh, shit, they want me to help them win a cup. Let's go. Losers need not apply. That is what we are saying. A lot of a lot of it don't blew up in their face for a while, but it, they they have put together a right. They have to put together a good team. That team is I mean, they're dominant in this this series. I I, I mean, if Florida comes back, dominant I mean, the last God help playoffs, them. but they, no, that's what I mean. They've been dominant and. The Stanley Cup playoffs and this series in particular, they've they've had the better of the play pretty much every every game. Even the game that they lost in game three, they still played pretty damn good. They don't give up a lot. No, nope. they're very they have a very staunch defense that is uh really staunch. putting it to the Florida Panthers. And before we get any further with this, I also want to say if you can come out on the twenty eighth to Little Caesars Arena and uh, hang out with us at the draft party. It is happening. The Rednicks did announce it, and we will be there. Well, me and Ryan will be there because it's a little far for Tyler. We need a fat um, we, head of Tyler. We need, it uh, do it, do it. We need shirts that just have Tyler's face on them, I think. No, but, we need to get one of those like, that we can get Jim to wear, where it's like a cardboard cutout with Jim's, like, Jim and Tyler's face. Wait, can we get Jim a, like, blow-up Tyler costume? Like, how he wears, oh like, the, like, the Chuck costume? Suit? Yeah, but a Tyler suit. I feel like no, we can There will be this. one year that I do make it for the uh, the draft party. Yeah, we'll see. But me and Ryan will be down <laughs> there on the 28th for whoever is going to go down there. Uh, feel free to uh, hook up with us. Hit us up on Twitter. I'll get some beer and then we'll watch it and act like we know who they're drafting like we do every year. We might know one. We, might, we know might we might know one, but we normally get the really shock surprise reaction and then notice the cameras on us and then we all have to cheer like something amazing just happened. But come join us down there on the 28th. Let's see if the wives get interviewed again. Uh biggest thing to drop today, and I'm not I mean, okay. Disclaimers take everything with a grain of salt because it is rumor season 
It is wacky GM season. Uh, They're all on some kind of drugs, the reporters and the GMs, apparently. But uh, uh, Shang Peng, who is a Sharks writer for San Jose Hockey Now, he is part of the PHWA, and he is also on the San Jose Hockey Now podcast. Can explain what that is for those that may not understand what that meant, meaning like me sometimes? That is the Professional Hockey Writers Association, which is the Association of Hockey Journalists. He is not a made up person. No, he's not. He also has NBC Sharks in his bio. So not a made up person, not some random nobody guy uh, had said that the Flyers might want at least two first round picks in a trade for Carter Hart. So like we said last week, Danny Briere doing a great job. If he gets two first round picks for Carter Hart, give him GM of the year already. Like that's the thing. Just give it to him and say, we'll try again in 2024, 25 because that would be absolutely insane. And I look at it, I'm like, would I like Carter Hart? And yeah, and we've been stumping for Carter Hart for a while now because I think it'd be a good tandem with him and Huso. Am I going to give up two first-round picks for Carter Hart? Absolutely not. That's a big no. I mean, you might give up a second and a really good prospect. Maybe if you want him bad enough, you would give up a first-round pick next year. But I'm not, and I get it, he's a young goalie. And he's he's proven he can be a good goalie. And he had some down games and, and a down pretty decent stretch of a season. But I don't think in any world, he's like two first round picks and a guy that you clearly pretty much want to move. Yeah. I don't think Carter Hart is the guy that you would give up two first round picks for. There's like maybe three, maybe 10 players in the NHL that you would give up two first round picks for, especially I'd say there's more than that. I mean, that's that's a debate for a different time. But I mean, at the, you think about if you're getting up that type of draft capital for a goaltender like that, for one, what does that do for your mindset of a Sebastian Cosa? Like you're you've already spent first round picks to technically technically to move up and get him as your quote unquote goalie of the future. So if you're doing the same thing for another guy now, I'm not saying that Carter Hart's not worth something. I don't think that two first round picks, though, is what you want to go and mortgage yourself on when you're not in a position to truly capitalize with that right now. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you, Ryan. If if you bring Carter Hart in, into Detroit, that just tells Sebastian Costa, dude, you're like four or five years away. I, oh, I wouldn't that, say that. I don't think I, mean, I, no, I, don't, I wouldn't go that far, but. But four or five years away from being the guy. No, I wouldn't even say that because nope. I would I would start to question it maybe if you're spending a lot on him. If you're trading him for a third round pick, let's go. Because hey, Carter, hey, you're our guy. Coast is coming up. He's gonna work your ass off to make sure you stay that guy. If you don't, you guys are gonna flip. If you don't like it, deuces. My thing is is like maybe that'd be the case if you had Huso signed for like four more seasons. You've got Huso you know. for two more seasons. You know that Costa is going to spend at least a season in Grand Rapids, and that would be the transition. So if you had Carter Hart and you signed him to a five-year deal or whatever, and Billy Huso is gone in two, you figure Costa is up in two, or you trade the last year of Huso and to bring up Costa as a backup. Costa plays a backup for a year or two and then transitions to starter, or you have to trade Carter Hart. The goalie, the goalie position is pretty flexible, because there are teams every year that want goalies and we've seen goalies go for decently high prices for goalies that are kind of mid or that are decently OK. But I think that if you were to bring in a heart and you could tandem heart and who so and then when Co- you gauge Kosa's readiness and bring him in, you just trade one of the guys and then you play Kosa for a backup for a season or two before he takes over the starter position that to me, goalie position is kind of the easiest Unless you lock your goalies up for absurd amount of time for high value, goalie position is kind of the easiest to find a transitional path between the AHL and the NHL by moving pieces because you only have to work with two players. You don't have to work with an entire forward group and worry about chemistry or an entire defensive group and worry about chemistry. You've just got to figure that's a part. A little bit, but you just got to figure out how to manage these two or three players and who to move when. So I don't think signing someone like Hart or the next guy that we'll talk about the ridiculousness of that request. Um, 
would really mess you up very much in terms of Kosa's development, because that's a point that's been brought up. They're like, well, what do you say to Kosa if you bring in this guy? Or what do you say to Kosa if you bring in that guy? You say, keep getting better. I mean, if I'm Kosa, I'm not worried about anything. No, Hart's going to be 25 in August. We got Huso who turned 28 in February. So as the season progresses, he'll turn 29 going into the second half of the year this year. That, that's a big gap in goalie years. I mean, you can argue it all day. It's like, I get it. Like we're arguing kind of semantics depending on the position, but in goalies, that's huge. Because if you got Hart only hitting his 25 year, or only hitting 25 years old, Coast is what, 20, 21 now? And he's, yeah, I think he's I at 21. Tw- he might be 20. He is 20. He'll be 21 in November. So you've got a great gap there. And you're not in hard snow slouch at this point. He, you could argue that he's a veteran. He's been around long enough now. And he, he's not bad. But two first round no. picks. I'm not doing that. If you look at the the sum total of his work in what has he got? Five seasons. This was his fifth season. 201 games played. He has an overall career goals against of 2.96 and a safe percentage of 906. 2020-21 was the year where he kind of fell flat a bit, started 27 games, had an 877 save percentage. That was low. After leading uh, he, them to the playoffs. Yeah, uh, but then he came back in 21-22, played 45 games, and had a 905. Uh, his goals against was a 316, so that's a decently, that's a higher goals against. But this season in 55 games, he had a 294 with a 907 save percentage. So he's worked his way back up. Their team sucks, too. Their their team sucks, too. So that's the other half of it. Now, him on a team. And they just like, traded away one of their arguably top defensemen. Yeah, but him on a team, him on a playoff team, say a playoff team that needs a, a good goalie, he could slot in and I think would do better behind a better defense. Not to say that we're that better defense right now, because clearly we're not. But next year, we could be. Philly's horrific defense. Yeah. Yeah, but the, yeah, Hart with that terrible defense still had a better stat line than all of Detroit's goaltenders. See, so that's what I'm saying is that would he be a good investment? Would he be a good platoon? Would he shore up a position that people will scream at me that we don't have a need in goalie? We do. We only have one goalie. You always right need now. a need in goalie. It's like having pitchers in baseball. You always yep. need a good goalie. We and need, you need depth at that position as well. Look and, at Vegas right now. Yep. Yeah, and we don't have any depth because we need to no. sign – for NHL, AHL, and Toledo. So it's a position of need, clearly. It's not a staggering need. I mean, we need offense more than we need a really good goalie. But I think it would create a a stable goalie tandem where you don't have to play Huso 55 games in a season. You could play Huso 41. You could play Hart 41. And then you've got an even split between the two. They get rest when they need rest. And then if you make the playoffs, you go with whoever was hot at the time. So I, I think it's good, but it's not two first round picks good. It's not something that Iserman, I think, would give up. If, if Iserman's trading two firsts, he's trading for a very high offensive player to slot right into the top line with Larkin and Raymond. It's not going to be for a goalie. I think if anything, he'll pick up a goalie off the free agent market unless those prices come way down. Like Jari? See, and I don't know about him either, because I think they said he was looking for a long contract like Trishan Jari wanted an over five year contract, I believe was the last report. I mean, he can want all he wants. It depends on if someone's willing to give it to him. Well, we've already seen teams are more than willing to give out term. As long now, biggest thing, though, on those terms, like we just saw, I I think we're going to touch on it here. GMs are finally getting smarter, and if they're giving out a six- to eight-year deal, they're at least putting stipulations, and while these guys have no move, no trade clauses for the first you know, half or first four out of six years, those last two years or the last couple of years, they're getting stipulations where they have now a a 10-team or 15-team no trade list. So if you want to give them term, you have those those things in place, I would be totally against it, but I'm not, not specifically for Jari, but in general. Yeah, the other one I want to talk about is Connor Hellebuck. Uh, Connor Hellebuck is reported as having no interest in doing a rebuild with the Jets, won't sign an extension. Now, I had tweeted about this on June 3rd. There was a crazy, absolutely insane proposed trade by the, I think it's the Winnipeg Sun, 
that would send Vili Huso, the Red Wings number nine pick, and Marco Casper to Winnipeg for Connor Hellebuck, to which I said, absolutely not. Please get that out of my face. That is 100% absurd. I am not trading Casper, who's a center, which is a arguably a bigger position of need for the Red Wings than goalie, who is going to bring grit to the lineup, who is super young, who's going to slot in underneath Dylan Larkin. And maybe can, maybe can elevate his ceiling to a 1B style center, maybe. But I just, it's not something. I Plus the number nine pick. Like, that's just, that's not something. And Vili Huso. So you get rid of your goalie. You get a goalie. And then you also give up futures and a really good prospect. While just getting mean, older with said yeah. goalie. Yeah, it makes no sense. Now, is Connor Hellebuck a hell of a goalie? Absolutely. A hell of a goalie. One of the best goalies in the league. Consistent nods for, not a consistent Vesna finalist, but consistent nods. And I mean, he looks like a pirate, so there's a plus. He's from Michigan, so there's a There's Michigan tie there. So that's the, there are ties and there are threads, and it all unravels when you make up a ridiculous cost like that, which I have no doubt that he'll fetch a good return. It absolutely will not be from us if it looks like that. Yeah, I would say if if there's a trade like that, I would say it looks more like a Carter Hart kind of trade. I'm not saying that that's what they would have to give up to get Carter Hart, but I mean it. That's that's that looks more like a Carter Hart deal than it does a um, Connor Hellebuck deal. Yeah, because Connor Hellebuck is already 30 years old. He'll be 31. Like, uh, he's 30 in May. Yeah, Hellebuck turned 30 in May. But well, here, I mean, here's the real kicker. Do you want to hear what uh, evolving hockey's projection is for him? For a contract, was it? So if you think that they were to trade him, so sign and trade, the projection for Hellebuck is an eight-year extension. So now we're playing into the 38-39 realm. Holy moly. Over $9 million. Yeah. No. I mean, Bob's got a $10 million contract, but that's that's to me, that's insane. I would not pay a goalie until they're 38 years old. Granted... He has 450 career games played with a 267 goals against and a 916 save percentage. So like stellar goalie. Great for a team like I don't know, the Seattle Kraken. Put him in Seattle and see what that does to their goaltending situation. I mean, put him really in any playoff team who performed well but had a lapse in goaltending. Could a Connor Hellebuck go to the Colorado Avalanche? Yeah, but how do they pay for him? I mean, trade some pieces around, move something out. They, that's the thing, and you're right, Ryan, is that the guys at the top, they've got cap issues. But I think that they've a team that's in a playoff picture or has been to the playoffs, an Edmonton Oilers. Could the Edmonton Oilers move around enough money to pick up a Connor Hellebuck? That's the thing. I mean, he needs to go to a team like that because he's 30. He doesn't need to go to a team like Detroit, who is pushing toward the end of a rebuild and just getting back into contention. Because I think we're still a good five, six seasons away from being an actual cup contender. And by that time, he's 36 years old. Yeah. If you expect him to take much less than a 6.1 right now, good luck. It comes quicker than you think, though. I feel like 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 that's what she said. Oh, I, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I, I think contention can can come a lot quicker than you think, because I'm not saying it's 10 years from now, but I'm also not saying it, it couldn't be three years from now. Who knows? It really kind of just depends on on the uh, the development of the young players. And it depends on uh, if you can find a diamond in the rough or you can make a trade that, you know, makes it look like like Marcia so at the, the Vegas Golden Knights right now. I mean, he was, if I remember correctly, undrafted, right? So I believe, yeah, I believe Jonathan Marcia so was undrafted. Yeah. So I, I can double check that real quick, but I'm pretty sure he is undrafted. And, and I mean, you need to hit on players like that. You need to hit on, on things like that. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of where it comes down to uh, trades like that. Um, signings even guys that are put on waivers that you pick up i mean look at what look at what seattle got in the uh, the kid from nashville there they like he was dominant this year for nashville 
Ellie Tolvanen, a guy like that where, you know, he was waived by the Predators, picked up by the Seattle Kraken. He had a pretty damn good season. You need guys like that, and especially in, in this situation that the Wings are in. You need fucking offense. That's that's what yep. it comes down to. You need to put the puck in the back of the net and while while being able to prevent the puck going in the back of your net. There's a lot of problems still. Stagnant cap will help, too. Yeah, but I mean, we can move into offense because there's also rumors on that front. So we're like rumor city. This is one oh, we're hey. actually this is the, one we we're actually involved in. Podcast. But this is one we're actually involved in. So Maybe. Pierre Lebrun reported that Alex DeBrinket has given the Senators a list of preferred destinations should Ottawa decide to trade him. Or should he say, please trade me, which is what is absolutely going to happen. Trade me right um, fucking now. Yeah, give me, give me my up. bags. I am leaving. Um, but naturally, it says naturally Detroit is among the most interesting possible landing spots, not only because of his roots in Michigan, but because the Red Wings badly need a scorer of his caliber and have both the cap space and assets to acquire him. Uh, he was near the top of the list as potential Red Wings trade targets last month. This is from Max wrote an article in The Athletic quoting Pierre Lebrun. But Elliot Friedman said the same thing. Elliot Friedman listed Detroit. He listed Vegas. He listed Florida. He said maybe Nashville. But he said that Detroit is the most intriguing because of the assets that are available, because of the hometown tie. You may be able to get him. You you are probably going to have to give up a lot to acquire him. But when you sign him, you may be able to sign him for a little less because he's going to his hometown. He's closer to family. There's those kind the of Andrew perks. Cop kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah. So... I mean, again, it's what would you give up to get to bring it? Ottawa gave up a seventh and 39th picks in last year's draft, plus a 2024 third rounder to get him with two years of team control remaining. And we wouldn't have that. You would have to get him and then sign an extension. Basically, he is one year away from being an unrestricted free agent. He has a nine million dollar qualifying offer. He's coming off his least productive season since 2019-20, which was still a productive season, but his least productive season. What are you what are you willing, I guess, and remember, trading within the division? What are you willing to give the Ottawa Senators for Alex to bring it? Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think as the as the smoker's lung slowly takes yeah, over. Exactly. Yeah. So, and my apologies, but no, I mean, yeah, he had 52 points last year, 28 goals. I mean, a bad year for Alex Zabrinkit is still 28 goals, and he played all 82 games. I mean, that's pretty damn good, if you ask me. Um, you know, in terms of a guy, this is like when you talk about the player that the Wings need, this is the player that they need. This is the guy that can come in and score 30 goals. This is the guy that can come up and maybe score 40 goals for you. So, I mean, and the Wings haven't had a 40-goal scorer since who? Datsuk or Zetterberg, was it? It's been a long time. I know that for sure. I'm not sure Pavel Datsuk ever scored 40 goals. So so then it might have to go back to Eisenman or Fedorov. I don't know, but I would tell you that Alex Dabrink has scored 40 goals twice in his seven-year NHL career. Yeah. Six-year NHL career. Sorry, 41, six years. 41 in his second year and then 41... His second, his last year, no, second. Wait, hold on a second. His no. last year in Chicago. Yeah, his which last year in Chicago. Again, an absolutely abysmal team. In Debrinket put up forty-one goals and thirty-seven assists for seventy-eight points. That this Chicago season, team was now they did have a didn't they have a fantastic power play though? They did, but the thing is, I think when players get traded places they don't want to play, their production dips, and I don't think Debrinket wanted to be in Ottawa. I mean, for good reason. It's the fucking Ottawa Senators. I don't think many players want to be there uh, with the ownership situation that they had. And now Melnick died. wanted to be there. Sure. Great. Yeah, I'm sure he really wants to be there. But they're getting sold. So when they're, they're in the middle of a sale process. The future is extremely uncertain for them as to I think they wanted to get a new arena, but now everything's got to go on hold. They need a new ownership group. This last guy just walked away because he said the process is taking too long. There's too big of a lag time between conversations with uh, current owners and the team that's selling the the people selling the team. It's a really kind of messy. It's a quiet, messy situation, I think, with Ottawa. And it's just not something to bring. It wants to be a part of. And also, I just don't think it's a place he wants to be. So, 
I think that to me, Detroit makes sense. And I wonder if they take a little less of a return because they're going to get faith for a player that trade him to a place he wants to go. But I don't to me that as a from a business standpoint, that doesn't make sense. No, I think if the senators are trading him in the division to a team that, you know, a lot of people argue that this is, you know, a potential rival going forward and it's a potential team that you could see in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, or even not even just in the Stanley Cup playoffs and really important games down the stretch, you could see the Ottawa Senators as a team that you're battling for for that last wild card or, or for the division or anything down the road. But like, if the Senators are going to trade to bring it to the Red Wings, it has to be, um, you know, a slam dunk home run for them. And then in terms of the contract extension, that's where you, you might, you know, get some favorable calls in terms of, uh, in terms of the, the, you know, the extension signed or, or what have you, because he does want to be in Michigan. He's from Farmington Hills. So, I mean, you know, that th- there's ties there and, and, you know, there are risks that you take in team building. And so this is one of those risks that Steve Eisenman's going to have to really look at this one hard because, and, and in a good way, because this is the kind of player that you need. This is the kind of guy that can come in and score 40 goals. Potentially. This is the guy that can come in and fix a lot of your power play issues. Uh, I mean, this is, this is the, this is who you're looking for. This is one of those, this is one of those trades and those moves potentially that like not can put you over the top, but can get you to that point where, okay, now we have something moving here. Now we, we see real improvement. Like last year was sick. Like last year was improvement this year. If you brought to bring it in and among amongst others, I think you'd see significant improvement. You might even see a playoff spot. Uh, to go back to the last 40 goal scorer was Marion Hosa. Oh, so 2008. Wah, wah. So I uh, fuck you for asking that question and having to find that out. Uh, I don't know. I, if we're talking about thinking about cost, you got to expect or think that Ottawa wants a, a first round pick for this season, right? Or if not, yeah. do, you, do you dangle that Boston pick at him? So let me give you this. Max Boltman writes what would be a comparable trade he said comparable would be last summer's kevin fiala trade from minnesota to la fiala was 25 an rfa who was a year from ufa status coming off a great season with the wild when he was dealt to the kings for the 19th overall pick in defensive prospect brock faber it says it's easy enough then to say a hypothetical red wings package might need to be built around pick 17 and a high level prospect which if you can say Here's 17 in Albert Johansson, or here's 17. See, this is where I go, uh, in this trade, do I want to include Wallander? But you might have to. So, like, here's 16 in William Wall, or here's 17 in William Wallander. Well, I think that Debrink is going to be better than whatever you draft at 17. So that's an automatic win. He's in the age range to help the team now and into the future. You may, like we said, you may be able to extend him for a little nicer deal than other teams may extend him for because of the situation. Are you comfortable with that? And I think with the glut of defense that we have this draft here coming up and so maybe you say, yeah, if you can lock that trade in and you can say 17 William Wallander and you bring in cat and then maybe with number nine, you don't pick a forward. Maybe you go for an Axel Sandy and uh, Pelika. Maybe you go for a David Reinbacher. You take defense with that high pick because you just traded away a good defenseman. So that could be the route they go, and that would shake it up a little bit. But I think that if that is all it took to get Cat, then I'm I'm making that trade. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's that. I was I was thinking maybe it was, you know, the the seventeen, maybe a player like Raymond because a roster. I'm not saying that that's what I would want. I'm just saying that they certainly very well may ask for something like that. So I don't know. They're not getting Edvinson. They're not getting, you know, Cider, obviously, or anything like that. But, I mean, Johansson, Wallander, not Edvinson, I don't think. No. I mean, they're not so, going to be like the crazy uh, Toronto no. fans who are saying they wouldn't trade William Nylander for Mo Cider. Oh, boy. I wouldn't be against it at all. If you, If you're going with that route with the 17th pick, You've got a play now guy that immediately helps your roster on one of the things that we have been needing for years. 
who would want to be here? Yeah. A natural goal scorer, a guy that I was really thinking Detroit was going to somehow land him in that draft year. And I've talked about this before in Chicago and their cock bag ways swooped him and picked him up The Detroit didn't get him. But so it'd be icing on the cake to have that come full circle and see him actually land in Detroit. And that's your future. There's Chicago obviously traded him to Ottawa knowing that that, you know, it, it was blocking yep. Detroit from being able to acquire. I'm sorry for cutting. Yeah, you. no, you're good. It's it's you. You lock him down for eight years and you, you, you give him the money. There's your 40, 40 goal scorer. If you can get him less than what you say, like, really, what's the difference between the trade package we're talking about here and for Nylander? Pretty much I think it's thing, an right? extra pick. Yeah, I think it's an extra pick with Nylander. I think that for, Toronto yeah. would ask for more. So if you can get him for hypothetically less i'm not saying that's going to be the case we could we crazier shit could happen but if that if the guy like that isn't going to sign and he says hey i want to here's teams i'd like to be traded to and they can make that happen i would hope that eiserman is on the phone and making having those conversations or they've already started absolutely uh so we're going to talk a little bit more about the future of the team and some contracts that might impact it but first what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor drafting so we'll be back in just one minute Light the lamp during the hockey playoffs with DraftKings Sportsbook. New customers can make a $5 bet and score $200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code THPN. That's code THPN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Massachusetts, call 800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelplinema.org. In New York, call 877-8-H-O-P-E-N-Y or text 467-369. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash hockey terms. And we're back and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, contracts coming up. So what we need to do, and I think what Iserman said that is going to kind of be a priority coming this July, is signing Mo Sider to an extension. So if we look around the league, our top UFA defenseman is no longer UFA. It makes me sad because he's the one that I wanted. He was at the top of my list. But Damon Severson did their sign-in trade, and I think they said it's like the only, like the second sign-in trade that's like ever happened in the NHL. Sorry, I'm randomly looking it up. No, the headline on shop. Uh, it's a Boston hockey thing, but it's the second on Friday, June 9th. The NHL saw its second true sign and trade in league history. The New Jersey Devils traded defenseman David Severson to the Columbus Blue Jackets, and he immediately inked an eight year, $50 million deal with the club. Um, but yeah, Damon Severson off the market. Uh, kind of sad. I mean, we could still go after someone like Radko Gudis. I think Scott Mayfield was another target people were looking at. But Damon Severson, 28 years old, signed a $6.25 million deal for eight years, which is mid-loaded, which was interesting to me, mid-loaded because the cap is going to go up uh, kind of after next season. So that you mid-load your contract and then you drop off at the back end instead of front-loading it. doesn't make sense to front-load it when your cap is so low. But uh, it's he's gone. But what I want to kind of look at is what is that kind of contract in the rumored $10 million eight-year contract for Rasmus Dahlin mean for Mo Sider. And I think Ryan has the evolving, ho- uh, evolving hockey contract projection up for Mo. So if you're Iserman and evolving hockey technically in this situation is, they've got him projected come July 1 t- to sign an extension with Detroit at six years and $6.91 million. All day. Absolutely. I mean, I would even try to say, hey, Mo, I'll give you an eight by eight. Like, let's move it. Let's give you a full eight year extension. Now, so, and that's not to say that this is low balling him. Evolving hockey, they've gotten their model down pretty damn good because weren't they pretty close on that Severson one? They're pretty close on most stuff. I mean, it's a couple, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars off. They've never well, been off by like four million dollars. Well, something. let's let's reference Darlene. Like they've re- they've got him projected at what? Or not, not that. What was the rumor? The, the rumor is eight years, 10 million a season. So evolving has him at eight, 10, five. 
Yeah. So, I mean, they're generally a few hundred thousand dollar difference, if that. And if you can get Mo at six million dollars for six years or seven years or however long you're going to sign him for, if you can get him for a six million dollar contract, you sign that contract unless it's like a one year. But that's you. You absolutely do that. A hundred percent, because that will be the best contract in the league going forward. I mean, for for much like the the Nathan McKinnon was for a long time. Well, hell, here you go. What Severson was, he, they signed him at six point two five million for eight years. Evolving had him at a six year six point two million dollar deal. So they're all they were off by two years and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. So if Mo, I mean, any any Detroit fan should be absolutely elated if that's what Mo Sider comes into. And like I said, I think Iserman's going to want to lock him up to a long-term contract. I, I I would think they'd want to get him in at eight years. But if you can get him for under $8 million for eight years, that's a an absolute home run. Like there, like I said, there will it will be the best contract in the NHL eventually because oh, cool. of what, what we've seen Mo can do. And with the cap expect not expected, but rumored to in a couple years be over ninety million dollars, and you're paying one of the top ten defensemen in the league six million dollars a season when he's that young, like that's insane to me. If you can get Cider on on a team friendly deal, even even if you give him the eight years times ten, I mean that's still probably still going to look like a fantastic deal down the road especially when the cap goes up you hear people talking about um you know a lot of these players are, are trying to just sign two-year deals like you saw the Gavrikov one you know signing a two-year deal knowing that the cap's going to go up astronomically or potentially astronomically um you know if the escrow gets figured out and everything over the next couple of years um so, I mean, it, would Cider want to do something like that where it's, you know, you you sign a two, three-year deal? It's, I, I know they kind of gotten rid of the bridge deals, but, like, because of the cap going up, is it a situation where Cider signs a two-year deal, three-year deal, and then he's able to, you know, really cash in again? Um, and I obviously, you know, he's not even close to free agency at this point, but, you know, can you buy out some of those free agency years too? You know what I mean? The so only monkey that. wrench. The only monkey wrench is Claude Lemieux's agent. I feel like that won't be as much of an issue. I think that they're kind of past that. But I see your point. Why is I mean, Claude see, Lemieux a fucking agent? What is going on in the world? But do you I mean Tyler? To your point, then are you see are you are you expecting like a four year deal with Cider? I could see that. I mean, honestly, if if I were doing it and I was Steve Eiserman, I would probably do. I would go to Mo Sider and slap the eight times 10 on, on the table and say, take this. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to pay him more than Kale McCarr. I think I start low. I yeah. think I say, Hey, here's an eight by six and a half. And maybe they come back at an eight by eight. What if it's go, seven? If you offer an eight by six and eight by six and a half, and they come back and say, eight by eight and you go okay let's let's meet in the middle at eight point seven eight by seven five i think you you absolutely still win at that point that's yeah, that's McAvoy's the thing is i don't think make, mcavoy is making nine and a half right now for boston <sighs> see i don't think there's any situation right now where you lose on a mosider contract based on current cap situation deals happening around the league with players of similar age i don't think you lose i just think is how much can you win on a most cider contract and an eight or a six by six and a half million or 6.9 million. Absolute win. A hundred percent. If you're looking at players 23 and under right now that are in the NHL, there's only 10 guys making over $1.4 million. Half of those guys are making North of four. And th- those names are Mira Heiskanen who has a 10, $10 million contract. Or salary, eight point five four five million dollar cap hit. This is as of right now. Quinn Hughes is seven eight five. Darlene is six even. Matthias Matthias Samuelson at, for Buffalo is four two, and Noah Dobson's at four. That is the yeah. as of right now contract status. Now looking at extensions moving forward. So, yeah, and what they'll do is they'll point at Miro Heiskanen and they'll say, "Well, your offense is not what Miro Heiskanen's offense is. Your defense may be." what Heiskanen's defense is or better. 
but your offense is not there. So we're going to bump your contract down a little bit and see what you can do, which is where the bridge might come in, Tyler, is we could say, well, they could say, well, we want a shorter deal so we can prove I can prove that I'm better than this person. So I get a bigger payday. But I think Eiserman wants to get it done. I think Mo is he's telling Mo he's part of the future of this team. He will get paid and not to worry about it. And I, I think that he he signs it. He gets it in long deal. I think that's it's a long term deal that he'll probably lock in. Um, but before we end tonight, we've got about 15 ish minutes left. And I kind of want to go through the roster to see where we might free up some spots for these guys that we want to bring in. So if we want to bring in a Demrinkit, if we want to sign a free agent, if we want to bring in someone like a Rad Kogutis or another defenseman, where are these spots going to be made? Now, the Red Wings have five guys that are technically dropping off at the forward position, are eligible RFAs and regular RFAs included, and you've got three dropping off at defense. Same deal, RFA, are eligible RFAs and UFAs. So if you look, Matt Luff is an arbitration-eligible RFA. Matt Luff's 26 years old. I liked what he brought during the season. He was really kind of brought in as a filler to play in Grand Rapids and come up when needed, played the position well when needed. But again, depth guy, Grand Rapids could probably sign. You look at Joe Valeno, I think he'll absolutely get a contract. Uh, he's still growing his game. He's proven himself a decently valuable depth piece. He's 23 years old. There's cut room throat. there. Yeah, I mean, he's chop ankle, but cutthroat too. Uh, you've got Alex Chason, who I think they could bring back for a year at a, a veteran minimum contract where he provided some really good power play. I mean, net front power play personality, kind of what you want Michael Rasmussen to be on the power plays, what Alex Chason did when Rass went down with injury. Yeah. I think that that is a guy they probably want to lock up. Adam Ernie, gone. Uh, Pia Suter is the other guy. I think there and there was yes. also an, there was an article out that said they have interest in re-signing Chason and Suter. And Suter, I think if you could lock him up, and I think I looked at the projection for Pia Suter was like a three-year, $2.2 million contract or something, and I'd sign that all day. So what you're yeah. freeing up is a Matt, spot in Matt Luff and a spot in Adam Ernie. Those are two forward spots that they would be freeing up. Their roster right now, they have 28 out of 50 contracts and 15 out of 23 roster spots going into next season that are full. But you're going to have to find some guys that are regular everyday players that need to move out to make room for guys. And I think top of my list, if I had to trade people at this point, it's Robbie Fabry. Dude can't stay healthy. Not sure what you could even get for him. Um, Philip Zadina, who we thought was going to turn a corner this season and got absolutely decimated by injury again, which is just, I mean, story of his life, I guess. But those are the top two on my list. And I've even seen Dominic Kubelik added into trade proposals because there's value there in Kubelik. He signed for another season at 2.5 million. He just killed it at the world tournament. He's 27 years old. There's value there. So do you include him in a package for a higher offensive, maybe a more consistent offensive threat? And that fills that like gets you a free spot. So you mean like move Kubelik out, bring somebody else in, and then bring, try and bring Dabrinkit in too? Or you include Kubelik in like a package for a William Nylander or something like that. So you're bringing in Cat and Nylander or you're just looking one or the other? No, I'm saying if you have to move a forward out in order to make room, you could include him in a trade for a higher talent. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, unless you hope that Zadina at four years younger and half little more than half a million in pay cut is going to start putting up the numbers that we saw from Kubelik. Kubelik, excuse me. Wow. Jesus Christ. Kubelik, these nuts. Um, I don't know. That, that, that's hard to swallow because you, sure, you're going to, if you bring in, in this hypothetical, a Nylander or to bring it, you're getting a likely 40 goal scorer one that has done it and can do it. But then you're also getting rid of a 30 goal scorer in Kubelik. <laughs> yep. And you're also in keeping a guy that can't fill pucks, just walls and logos with net with puck with pucks, no nets, just logos. Can't fill nets. Chests. Absolutely. And Vol Zena. So I, I don't know. 
if it's if it's a great return, maybe. But right now, that deal for Kubalik at two and a half million for just this season, maybe it turns into a, a deadline deal. But I think you got to keep him for the way the momentum he's got going for him right now. The other thing we got to remember is I think we all want to make a spot for Marco Casper. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing where if you're looking at if you're looking at your top line right now of Perron or Larkin and Perron and Raymond or whatever you want to throw. So you've got Larkin, Cop, Perron, Fabry, Kubalik, Zadina, Berggren, Raymond, Valeno, Chason, Ernie and Suter are going to be like every day. If you consider them your everyday players right now, and I'm not counting Michael Rasmussen because he's hurt, but he'll be back. So Without take even out Chase into on. account a potential of Carter Mazur. Sure. So take and out Blum. Take out Chase on and put in Rasmussen. You you've got a full lineup right there. And like no. you said, that's no Carter Mazur. That's no Elmer Soderblom. That's no acquired cross. Uh, that's uh, cross. Hannes is a bit out, but that's no. Sure. I'm just signed like free agent names that you never know how this offseason can go, though. Sure. But that's no signed free agent. So that's no UFA you're picking up off the market. That's no trade for a higher offensive talent. There's going to have to be wiggle in there and someone's not going to make it. So we're all talking about, oh, you could pick up this player, pick up that player, sign this player, trade for this guy. But we're not talking about who's going to go out. Who are we going to lose in these trades? Because there are going to be some teams that want trades that want a roster player, that need a roster player to fill a role. So I think that's the part that everyone's missing is that do you need to move? Can you move someone like a Philip Zadina? He's on a controllable, a small money deal. Then maybe you can flip him out for a third round pick or whatever. You're taking a loss because he was a former first, but I don't even think you can get a third round for him right now. Mm. Do they have to include Maybe to get a to bring it. Do you have to trade a Bear Grin? Like that's something we need to start asking ourselves is who do you need to trade in order to bring someone like that in? Maybe you I can trade part, an RFA Joe Valeno in part of a deal. I think a big part of me wouldn't want to see a trade for to bring it made in division. No, I'm fine with being in division. I would like to see what additions are made before a trade was like before a trade were to take place, meaning getting to July 1st. But at the same time, it's not like, going to happen because Ottawa is going to want if they want the 17 pick, the trade has to happen in the next two weeks. That's why I was. That's why I brought up the Boston pick next year. Yeah, but I mean, that's again, that's a lower pick. They're going to want something a little bit higher, I think. Yeah. So that's the thing we really have to look at is will someone take Fabry in a trade knowing his injury history? Is someone going to ask for a Kubalik? Is someone going to ask for a Bear Grin? Is someone going to ask for a Valeno? I mean, there are pieces that are going to move. Maybe you say, Pia Suter, we'd really like to re-sign you, but we don't have the roster room in order to do it. So, I mean, all that can be figured out later. You can be 10% over the cap. You can have your rosters have to be set right before the season. I think it was 20 no, you can be 10% over the cap oh, yeah, it's 10. up until 10. the season starts. Yeah. Um, but the rosters, and again, again, rosters have to be set before the season starts. So you could fill that locker room and then just pair people down later and trade people off later before the season starts. It's a Injuries. little harder to do. Sure, it's a little harder to do. The return's going to be a little bit less. But, I mean, right now, we've got enough guys to, to field a team, really, um, if you're re-signing someone like a suitor, if you say you're re-signing suitor Chase on and Valeno, you've got enough guys to field a team. Well, at least at forward. On on defense, Gustav Gustav Lindstrom's out the window. Robert Higgs, someone floated there like Robert Higgs definitely getting re-signed. If he's getting re-signed, I don't know what's happening in this world. Uh oh, Gustav really Lindstrom be gone too. Gone. It was locked on. Locked on Red Wings are like, yeah, bring back Robert Haig. And I'm like, please don't bring back I'd take Robert Hague. over Haig. I don't want either of them. Not either, but if, they're, if, the, you're, if you're putting a gun to my head and tell me to pick one, I'm picking Osterley. Yeah, as your seventh yeah. D. I'll take him all day. Absolutely. He can play forward. He can play defense. He sits back there as your seventh D utility guy when and you he's need mobile. him. mobile. He doesn't always make... We get pissed off at him, but not as much as the yep. other two. Hey, at least can put a body on. Lindstrom, he's pretty much been shit since he got hurt last season. And if there's 
injury, you can still bring up like a Johansson and still have Osterley as your seventh D. So I'm that I'm not worried about. But if you want to move in Edmondson, I mean, Gustav's gone. So you've got your defense is what? Sherratt, Edmondson, Wallman, Sider, Mata. And no, I then, wouldn't even count Edmondson right now. Well, I'm saying if you Wallman, want to move in an Edmondson. Well, well no, I, said I'm saying you can't only because of the injury, the recovery. Sure. But I mean, for I the stretch Johansson of the season right now. For OK. OK. So Johansson and Sider or Johansson and our Wallman and Sider, Johansson and Mata. And then uh, you look at uh, Shara and who's injured right now. Pissick's injured. He's not coming back. I don't think no. you've got room to pick up a defenseman. So you they get a Radko to. Gudis. But then do you want Gudis and Sherrod as your final pairing? Oh, boy. No, turn style city. Fuck. That's what that would be. <laughs> Sher- Sherrod. I think Gudis could go on. If you had Gudis on the second pairing, if your you, second pairing was Oli Mata and Radko Gudis. No, I don't even want that either. If you. Oh. Uh, I like the idea of Gudis. Don't get me wrong. Your bottom pairing Gudis cannot be Sherrod and Gudis. Together. You're, you're almost forced to have Sherrod on the second pair at that point because you can't have Gudis on, I don't think, in your top four. I think Gudis can only be a guy, like right now he's getting sheltered minutes in Florida. In a perfect I mean, Gudis, world, you'd move Sherrod out, you'd bring uh, Gudis in, but obviously that's not going to happen. You can't. Well, in no, a perfect world, contract. you would think that Sherrod would be doing what Gudis is, but apparently that we can't have nice things. In a perfect world, Sherratt would be playing a decent brand of hockey every night. That's what I'm I mean, saying. that's what it is. So, now, I mean, you're talking isn't playing perfect hockey in, by any means, but he was playing more sound. He's, he's effective, limited. very effective. He's in a specific role to go out there and play defense. Sherratt just yeah. forgets that he's a defenseman half the time. So, if you're a top pair, I think Wallman Sider is your locked in top pairing. Mm-hmm. I think as the season goes on, your second pairing is going to be an Edvinson in whoever they put with him on the right side. And that could be a Sherratt. Could Edvinson make up for Sherratt's lack of defense? No. It, Cider couldn't even do it. Wallman, everyone that was with Sherratt got worse. <laughs> so, How? <laughs> I don't know. Don't, it's a fucking black hole. I have no idea the anomaly that happens. Maybe it's got some weird electromagnetic the, field or uh, something. Old- the old Jonathan Erickson, whoever you put with oh, Jonathan Erickson, God. got worse besides Nick Cronwall. I mean, it, it's, it basically comes into everyone that had Sherratt before this saying, I told you so. Tyler, you're part of that bandwagon. But again, we didn't think it would be that bad. Now, I'm going to hold out. Oh, I did. It'll get better in some sense of the, of the word. But I think at the end of the day, pairing, it's not good. At the end of the day, I think Sherratt is a third pairing defenseman. So your second pair has Olimata on the left side and someone on the right. Johansson. Could well Johansson had Johansson and Wallander have both played right in their career. Do you think so, Wallander's gonna come in and go, I, go right in? He could. He could I mean he's gonna be in North America next season. He's gonna come into training camp, could blow the doors down. We'll see what happens. But right. I we need to pick up a right defenseman. We that's you, like a high need right now, right behind stellar offense is a right de- defenseman. And unless we're trading for someone, the only I feel I only good free agent left. When, and if you, one more person tweets at me, Eric Carlson, I will block you because it's not Quinn happening. Hughes. It's not <laughs> happening, Tyler. Testing. Quinn Hughes, Testing. if we're trading for anyone from Vancouver, it's Elias Pedersen. It's Ooh. not going to be Quinn Hughes. Don't tempt me with a good time. That would be amazing. So, Henrik so, Server 2.0. It's the defense is the messiest situation, but if you had to move if you had to move someone out, I think we would all 100% agree that it's Ben Sherratt, the immovable object currently. And it's just Goose, losing Gustav Lindstrom's a nothing, losing Robert Heggs and nothing. Jordan Osterley, if you sign him for your 7th is fine. There's got to be a little bit of wiggle in the defense. And if you could just pay someone one of your second round picks to take Ben Sherratt's contract, even if you ate a quarter of it, if you ate 2.5 million, if you ate 2.5, actually, I don't think you can even do that because that's over 50%. If you ate one and a half million and you took Ben Sherratt down to a three million, uh, $250,000 contract and said, I will give you a second round pick. And I will retain salary on Ben Sherratt, just a free space. 
I mean, it's something you almost for have to for just to get rid of him. I know for uh, oh, do you mean anyone to just get rid of him? Would yeah, you do it? I don't it? think Steve Eiserman's going to do that though. You think it's a pride thing? Like yeah. uh, I, I'm going to yep. stick to my guns with it. Yeah, because I mean, it's one year into the deal. I mean, not that it was like an extensively long deal. It's a three year deal worth four point seven five, right? But I mean, it was a four year deal. Yeah, a four year. Okay, so it was a four year deal times the four point seven five. I mean, Eisenman, if he gets two serviceable years out of it, we'll be happy. But I'll tell you what, I don't think he's going to just go out there and, and give this guy away for free. I mean, would he? If he could, probably, but I don't think he can. I mean, that's that's kind of what you have to look at. Like, who's taking Ben Sherratt at this point? Maybe Arizona? Did you get <laughs> for, the Coyotes for Clayton Keller? Him? might. Did you yeah. get the Coyotes to take him? I mean... They need ben to Sh- ben Schrott right? for Keller, one for one, Tyler. Yeah, one for one. The trade is one for one. No, I ben mean, Schrott for Clayton Keller. <laughs> straight up. Boom. Lock it in. Uh, no, I mean, I, that that's the tough part. You, like, you always, there's always a whipping boy on defense. Like, there's just always going to be that. You know, for a long time, it was Erickson. For a long time, it was We Kyle had Quincy. several, though. We've had a lot. Andreas this Lilio last season, was one at one point. This last season, Jakob Gustav Pindle. Lindstrom, Robert Haig, we had Ben Sherratt, Jordan Osterley at times. We had at least four this season. Quincy was the guy that I always used to give the shit you. to. Ryan him, will never him, talk him, about Kyle Quincy. It, Tyler. The him, name cannot him, leave his mouth. Him, Jonathan Erickson, Kendall. At least at that point, Erickson wasn't a fucking pylon. Ryan Sproul. No, he just took a lot of stupid ass penalties. Xavier Ouellette. Did the Tigers just tie the game? Remember when we thought those guys were going to be good? They did. That, that's what they. That's what we thought was going to be. They did tie the game. They did. That's so why I said they did. The, the the old the Robbie Russos and the uh, the Ryan Sproles and and uh, Xavier Ouellettes and those guys. That that's the who Adam, we thought Adam that the Almquist. Was going to be. Adam Almquist. Who did we One trade goal. to Chicago? Who was that? Jan Jan Mersak. There was a lot. Um, it's it feels good Jared Coro. Oh boy, this, <laughs> this like, is this is go. when you're talking about like players from Grand Rapids that were there too long because they weren't good enough to make the team. We, we could go through the Ken Holland yearbooks and it would just be Tomas absolutely Yerko, horrible. Another guy that was fucked up by Mike Babcock. So one of the other episodes we'll have to do this summer is just <laughs> where would the Red Wings be if these players would have succeeded. Based Callie on their Arncroft. previous Cali, Ar- well, Cali Arcox was a, is a good hockey player. Um, so was uh, who was the other one that they uh, traded and played for Dallas for a while? Uh, um, I said his name last week. Yeah, Yanmark, Matthias Yanmark. Yan- Yanmark. He was Yanmark Nylon at the point. Nice Matthias Yanmark. It's uh, there. There's a whole a whole list full of people that uh, we could just name obscure Red Wings prospects, Thomas McCollum, that never like um, did, did well at the NHL level and uh, had to abandon ship, but uh, we'll Joey save that for McDonald's. another day. Oh, God. So I think I did pretty well with my transitions tonight, uh, going from, <laughs> from theme to theme. So I want to get your guys' final thoughts before we sign off so we can end on a high note. I'm going to start with Ryan this week. Uh, we need to get the drafts. My head hurts less. But uh, and also free agency because there it's the speculation's only going to pick up the as this month goes along. And We're it's entering silly brutal. season, brutal, silly brutal. season, brutal. And, and it doesn't help because we know the cap isn't going up more. Well, actually, we don't know what the cap is going up to yet officially. Yeah, Batman will hold it at a million. I mean, we assume that it's going to be a million. So. I mean, you've got to think that's going to bring some awesome intrigue to this offseason where guys are like important players are going to get traded. But it's the NHL. They're boring. So maybe nothing will actually crazy happen and we'll be disappointed. But hopefully if anything does happen, it's to Detroit and we're all really happy and excited like a Debrinkit or a Nylander. Like, that'd be great. 40 goal scorers. Hey, and then watch them do nothing. But that's our luck. Hope not. But anyways, it's uh, Tigers tied the game. They're down five to one. It's five five. So I'm gonna go watch that. That's all I got. Already ran thirty three. 
something sad happened with the Red Sox because Tyler made a really upset <laughs> face. Rafael Devers just got robbed of a home run over by the bullpen in right field. That's what, oh, that's what you get for having a five foot fence. <laughs> but um, no, my final thoughts are: I mean, we were talking about all these, you know, prospects that unfortunately didn't work out. We have a lot now. I mean, and you see a lot of them that have already came up, you know, and, and made an impact already. And Cider and Raymond and and guys like, um, you know, Wallman, who you got, you know, f- from St. Louis and, and, you know, for fucking peanuts, exactly. nothing for, for Jake no- Wallman for nothing. And Jake Wallman is your probably your second best defenseman. You know, Edvinson's coming up. You have Johansson coming up at some point. Wallander coming up. So there's there's a lot of hope. There certainly is a lot of hope. And, and I think people. People need to be a little bit more patient. Uh, I know I know we're we're coming we're embarking on a big off season and I I people say like you know that's like the next off season will be just as big. I don't know, man. I think this is a really big off end, uh, off season for Steve Eisman to to kind of start to shape the future of the team in terms of of like the pillars of who's going to be here when the team is actually re- ready to compete. Um, but yeah, no, my final thoughts are we have some prospects to look forward to. There's a lot of hockey still to be played here. Um, I guess not really in the NHL, but a lot of, a lot of things to, to hash out over the off season and we'll be here to do it. So, uh, and you can follow me on Twitter at seal dog 91 to discuss that and anything else. Yeah. My final thoughts are just going to be, uh, come hang out with us. We like seeing everyone. I'll have stickers. I might order some new stickers come hang out with us me and ryan will be there we will be maybe slightly inebriated uh we will be down in it's a chevy chevy plaza that's what it's called that's where we will be uh talking to everyone and just hanging out and a bunch of us always go down there i message locked on i think brian is going to be down there with scotty uh i believe the red wings rant guys are going to be down there as well and it's going to be a good time. We always have a good time down there. It's a lot of fun. They set up cornhole. There's a tent sale. We drink. What a it's throw. Great. Sorry. <laughs> and there was and uh, there was a there was a throw. Uh, but you can follow me online at Bringing the Wing. You follow the Grindline podcast online at Grindline Pod. We give a shout out to the Hockey Podcast Network for hosting us and spreading us around. Uh, we are also now on Amazon Music. If you search the Grindline on Amazon Music, our podcast is up there. And last time I checked, if you stream our podcast on Amazon Music, you get like a $5 gift card or something to your Amazon account. Uh, I also have control control of our Spotify now, so that's cool. But yes, oh. Amazon Music. We are on Amazon Music now, if that is where you listen to your podcasts. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube as well, so go sub to us on YouTube and turn on the notifications. We give a shout out to Vintage Detroit, which is the only place you get your Detroit jerseys from and worked on. And if you use the promo code GRINDLINE and bring hockey back, you will get 12%. On Howie's Hockey Tape, you'll get 10%. And you can check out our merch on redbubble.com by searching The Grind Line. But that is going to do it for us tonight. So for Ryan and Tyler, I'm Greg. You stay classy, Hockey Town.